Oh, all right. Yeah, the let's call the December meeting of the Hudson River Black River Riding District to order. Again, Pledge of Allegiance. I assume. <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Farrar, when you're ready. Chairman. Okay. David Gertzbesser. Here. Michael Astafan. Here. Albert Hayes. Here. Philip Klein. Here. Thomas Stover. Here. Mark Finkel. Here. Michael Clark. Here. Robert Leslie. Here. Robert Fulton. Here. John Hudson. Here. Cheryl Wright. Here. Richard Farrar. Here. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, any revisions to the meeting agenda today? Did anyone? Motion to adopt the agenda. I have a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. Yeah, I have a second. Uh, First one. So, Mr. Mr. Klein, Mr. Astafan. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Uh, no guests? No one signed up for public comment? We're winging it right through here. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any changes, questions? Was the board minutes from the last meeting? All right. I have a motion to accept them. Make a motion. Second. All right. I have a motion. I'll second. Two seconds. I have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? I'll abstain. One abstention. <clears throat> um, report of the executive director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You'll find my report. <coughs> on page 10 of the board package. The month of November has been uh, very much the same as uh, previous months in that our focus continues to be um, resolution, uh, seeking resolution, final and permanent uh, resolution of our uh, ongoing financial difficulties. Um, the the uh, litigation continues. Everyone's aware of that and watching that more closely than ever. Uh, to add to that, uh, you know, senior staff, including myself, has met uh, repeatedly. Um, we also, uh, the CFO and myself, also met with Mr. Stover in November uh, to begin and, and discuss initially uh, our next three-year uh, budget to begin that development process. We had a good meeting. Mr. Ferrara has been has put in a significant amount of time already, and it occupies much of our discussion. Um, obviously, the, our current situation ties in very closely into the thought process involved in developing that budget. Um, I think that will be discussed a little bit further in detail here, including uh, including the schedule for that uh, the budget process for us between now and June of 2012. And keep in mind, I, I, I'm sure everybody remembers, but I'll say it again that our our budget year is uh, a little bit different color uh, different color horse than most. It's uh, our fiscal year begins July 1st. And we develop uh, a budget for uh, three years, each year being discrete, and yet that uh, next three-year budget cycle begins July 1st of the coming year, 2012. Uh, that has, and between that and the um, finances of the entire regulating district, that discussion has occupied the great majority of my time and of senior staff. Like I said, we did meet with the uh, finance uh, committee chair. We discussed it at length in senior staff. And uh, that work is ongoing on a daily basis. And I would be happy to take any questions that any uh, board member has at this point. I would also want, I also uh, overlooked one thing. I also did meet uh, with the Black River Area Administrator uh, late last month, uh, along with the Chief Engineer. We met at Stillwater Reservoir. Um, 
our, our staff there uh, have, uh, over the past 12 months, I think it is, uh, made significant repairs to uh, the stems on two gate valves. I don't mean to be stealing the thunder from the, the chief engineer, but I just happened to be there and I wanted to uh, compliment the work that the, the staff has done in-house. Um, it, it's meth uh, meticulous, uh, tedious work to do, uh, and they've done a very good job. And, it, and uh, I'd just like to note to the board that uh, it's a professional job, and it's going to last many, many years just uh, by appearances. I think it improves what was there mechanically in years past. Any questions for Mr. Clark? All right, thank you. Thank you. There are no contracts to consider right now because we can't afford them. <laughs> so let's get to the, the committee reports. We'll start off with Governance Committee. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have to report that the Governance Committee met at 10 o'clock today. Um, all committee members were present. And um, we had four areas of discussion, of which two we are in agreement to sending to the full board today for your um, review, uh, but hopefully for your approval. First one is the whistleblower policy. The board has met, or the committee has met, and we are all in agreement that it satisfies uh, what we were looking for uh, for our agency, and uh, we have sent it to the full board for the full board's approval. Unless the uh, full board has questions, uh, we certainly will try to answer them. Uh, staff certainly can help to answer the questions uh, more specifically. So I'll turn that over to you. Okay. So we have a recommendation from the Governance Committee to accept the whistleblower policy. Are there any questions on it or any comments? Mr. No. Leslie, anything? Uh, no. no. Okay. All right. I would recommend that we adopt it. Okay. So we also have a recommendation from the Legal Counsel. All right, so I'm looking for a motion to adopt the whistleblower policy. Oh, we don't need a motion. Okay. Oh, so. Or do we just need a vote? Do we need a motion or just? Yes. First, we need a first, second, and a vote. Hmm? Coming from committee, I don't think you need it. No, it's already out of committee. Yeah, so coming. this is the full board. Yeah, but it's coming. The full board okay. needs to. Okay. I'm not going to make a motion to. I. We got a motion down there. All right, we have a motion from Mr. Finkel. Mr. Finkel. Yes. A second. Second. Mr. Klein. Mr. Klein. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. The second one is the Code of Ethics. We reviewed the language uh, of that, and we're satisfied that it meets uh, our current requirements. And we will turn that over to the full board for your questions and or approval today. Okay. Are there any questions or <coughs> comments on the Code of Ethics policy? Mr. Leslie, any comments from the? Uh, there is a resolution, a proposed resolution on page nine of the committee agenda to adopt the uh, code of ethics. Um, again, uh, the code itself will be on uh, pages ten and eleven. This is the ABO's model, basically. Yes, this is the ABO's okay. model. In your governance package. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, no questions. Do I have a motion to adopt? The I make a motion. Code of ethics policy. Make I have a motion. I have a motion for. Second. Mr. Hayes. Do I have a second? No. Second. Mr. Finkel. Mr. Finkel. I have a motion. <coughs> second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? No. Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. The last thing, Mr. Chairman, and it, it's nothing that has to be uh, voted on today to the main board, but the Governance Committee is currently working on uh, reviewing our committee charters and making some recommendations. Hopefully we can 
get that done by January. Uh, we're going to try. Uh, and if that's successful, and the full board agrees to it, then we also need to make a unison revisions to our bylaws. So we're taking a look at both of those aspects. We're trying to put together, and we'll be putting together some language for your uh, review. And uh, again, we hope to have that ready for January. And uh, you know, we'll do our best. Beyond that, uh, we have nothing else to report or ask of the full board today. I, I, I have one. There was some discussion at the last meeting, and I know you weren't there, uh, about a, a fourth committee, an operations committee, because of the nature of our oh. structure. Here. Okay. I don't know if you want to consider that. Yeah, I'll write that down. We'll take a look at it. Okay. That's, that's, that's a good suggestion. Any other uh, uh, concerns you want us to take a look at? Uh, to the governance committee. This I is the time for us to do it because we'll be putting together some language. Well, if you think of something, you know, run it through the chairman, and then uh, you know, the chair can uh, either uh, contact me or have staff yeah. contact me. Okay. Any other questions for? I have no governance. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, general council report. Uh, my report is on page 11 of the uh, board's packet. Uh, first and foremost, the five counties uh, suit is progressing. Uh, we have filed our brief in opposition to the appeal. Uh, we have also uh, had filed a motion to uh, compel payment by the five counties as well as uh, expedite the appeal. The appellate division third department in a 5-0 ruling ruled against us on both of those uh, motions. So the appeal will not be expedited. Rather, it will be on the February term, uh, February 2012. <coughs> we do not have a date yet as to when that oral argument will take place. Uh, and they will not compel the five counties in the interim to pay any portion of the uh, assessments that are under challenge at this point. Did they offer a reason as to the? Uh, they did not. It was a summary, short opinion. And they don't have to offer a reason? They do not. OK. <laughs> uh, it was not, uh, not great news. And yet, uh, I don't think it will impact their decision on the underlying appeal. Let's hope not. Uh, we have also had the NIMO oral argument, uh, oral argument for the uh, U.S. Court of Appeals Second Circuit, um, and are awaiting decision on that matter. Um, Mr. Leslie, question on that? Sure. Is it proper or within etiquette to maybe correspond with Judge Olisi? asking him for an update on where those uh, issues are presently standing? Well, Judge Alisi is holding in abeyance his decisions on the state NIMO claims mm -hmm. pending final resolution of the <coughs> NIMO claims in the federal court system. The, and and the federal court system is where we just had oral argument and where we are awaiting decisions. So until we get okay. a decision from the federal panel, Judge Alisi really isn't compelled by his own promise to uh, pursue resolution of the state court claim. Um, we basically argued in the federal courts that one of the reasons that the federal courts ought not take this matter up is because it's pending in the state court. So until the federal court agrees with us, we're kind of in this. Sounds like a circle. It is a circle. It's an end to And we're, we're counting on the federal courts to get us out of that washing machine. Of and doom. the attorneys, that law firm that we have hired in Washington that's handling that? Uh, no. The no. Firm in Albany of uh, oh. Brown and Weinrod. Okay. David Sherbin is of counsel at that firm. 
he is representing us both in the federal and the state, and the state court okay. on the NIMO issues. And has he given us any indication on how the federal court calendar might be coming? He's, he's very confident with regard to our uh, possibility of success in the federal courts. Uh, anticipates this spring we'll have a decision. Spring is not that far away. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Do you have anything else? I, I have nothing else. <coughs> All right. <coughs> All right. Thank you. We'll get on to the Finance Committee report. Mr. Stover. Mr. Chairman. <coughs> As uh, Executive Director mentioned, we met, or I met with them, the senior staff here in, uh, at the Watertown office on November 29th, and <coughs> the Chief Financial Officer had prepared an excellent uh, tentative uh, accounting of where we are and what we might do. And <laughs> With our, <clears throat> it's hard to plan three years in the head when you don't know what your major uh, uh, source of income is going to be. But uh, we talked a lot about uh, the various aspects of our financial situation and <clears throat> made, uh, and the chief engineer was there also to explain the uh, engineering ex expenditures and things of that nature. And we had, a, and Carol was there. We had the, the uh, area administrator for Black River. We had a very good, well-ranging discussion, and uh, it was extremely helpful to me. I only, uh, my only suggestion was, when we get into this situation, maybe later on next next year before approval, if if we have another meeting of the Finance Committee with the staff. It ought to be the whole committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it'd be good to, uh, well, I only have Mr. Astvan on my committee now. Maybe I'll we'll have another one by then. But uh, I think it's it was very helpful. And I don't like to uh, present what went on just from my perspective. I'd rather have uh, the full committee uh, put in their uh, recollection and, and uh, suggestions as to what we do. But I think we made a lot of progress and, and uh, the Chief Financial Officer has, has a revised version uh, in, the, in your packet and there will probably be revisions as we go along and as you see in the schedule there, it won't be adopted until uh, mid-2012, and there'll be several meetings along the way on uh, various aspects of the proposal. But I found it very, very interesting and very helpful to me, and, and uh, we'll be pursuing it for the next six, almost six months. Okay. So right now, we just need to adopt the budget development schedule? I can speak to that very briefly. Okay. <coughs> Part of the discussion was around how we go about approving and adopting a June 2012 budget. A lot of that, again, as, as the chairman pointed out, was the funding issue. But uh, in terms of moving the ball forward, so to speak, it's, it's very difficult to budget, you know, without uh, the anticipation of funding. So, by, so the initial budget that was presented included uh, revenue as to, uh, to be the, the assessments, uh, both past due and, and future assessments. And uh, that was critical to enable a full discussion around the capital plan which is fairly substantial in both the Black and the Hudson River end. 
we'll certainly get into that over the course of the next six months. But back to the budget development schedule. So we, we have a development schedule that we've uh, put before the board since I've been here over the past five years. Uh, and following the adoption, and I'm suggesting we adopt this schedule as a formal act of the board to recognize that these are at least an outline of what it uh, would take to adopt the budget. And I'll just highlight, uh, to the chairman's point, we, we do have, following the adoption today, there would be at least two additional meetings with uh, the chair and if the chair and uh, the other members of the chair uh, so desires. And then there would also be two formal finance committee meetings before the regular meeting as we get further into looking at presenting a draft budget and then ultimately uh, a committee meeting that would uh, adopt the proposed budget and then uh, offer that to the full board for uh, full board adoption in June. So that schedule is on page 12 in the regular packet. Uh, it's not etched in stone. This thing, it, you know, the staff will be as flexible as as the committee and the board needs us to be, and I would just recommend that uh, the full board adopt this budget schedule. Okay. Now, do we need a, a motion for that, or can just just a? Do it by motion. By motion. By motion. I mean, I'll move that as a motion. Okay. We have a motion to accept the budget developmental schedule as written on page twelve. Do I have a second. I'll second. All right. So. Second. So so all right. Any questions? <coughs> Comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Thank you. Uh, I guess you'd continue on with your report. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report begins on page 13. I'll just go over the highlights. As has been the case over the past many months, uh, the current general fund balances for both uh, the Black River and the Hudson River area uh, have continued to decline through last month. Uh, the good news in the Black is that they've received uh, the lion's share of their assessments, and currently their uh, general fund is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, this is off the top of my head, 764000 um, the Hudson River, however, it continues to decline, um, and that is largely a result of the uh, the structural deficit that we continue to run. And as of the printing of this report, we we're down around two hundred seventeen thousand uh, dollars. We did experience for the first time a little cash flow disruption, which I have forecast to happen later in the year, but. Uh, the uh, cashing of the presenting of checks to the bank and those becoming good funds and, uh, and disbursements sometimes don't line up. Uh, so we've had our first case of a disruption. We took care of it. And those are the types of uh, things I think we're going to see more of, which is just going to make us focus more on, on the timing of these activities. So and I will report that to the board each month. Uh, in my report, the cash flow report now incorporates both watersheds, so you can see uh, from a forecasted uh, standpoint exactly uh, where I see fund balances at the end of each month through December 2012. And I, if the board doesn't have any questions, I was going to move on to an item Back in October, may have been November, but I believe it was the October report, I presented to the board a draft master plan for the MWBE uh, goals for, this, this goes by the state here. So this particular plan uh, ends March 31st of next year. So for us, this, this plan doesn't really cover a big period of time, which is why it initially and currently doesn't have a whole lot of money in terms of the, the pie um, that is out there for us to procure MWBE firms. In any event, the final plan is due this Friday. 
and I have <coughs> given each of the board members a separate final plan document. The only difference or change in this document from the last document is I have changed the overall goal and the individual goals <coughs> to be consistent with the governor's executive order, which states that it must be 20 percent. We had we had a number which was higher. So this plan calls for a 20% goal, and that to be split 8% uh, MBE, Minority Business Enterprise, and 12% Women Business Enterprise. And then there are specific percentages of how we might pull off the 20% that falls into procurement areas, being consultant, commodities, construction, and professional construction services. Uh, there's no need for the board, unless the board has an issue with anything in the report. I bring this up only to make uh, it official and the formally contesting the minutes of the board acknowledges uh, the existence of the <coughs> MWBE master goal plan, which I will submit to, uh, I guess it's the division of whatever. Uh, <coughs> On Friday, on the electronic business development. Yeah. If the board has any questions about this plan, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Yes. So for our, um, just going back a little bit, um, you had indicated that the approximate balance, unbalanced for HR, is two hundred seventeen thousand. Correct. As of this uh, last month. Um, how far can can we keep going uh, on that without, end without falling off the cliff? Without any infusion of additional revenues. Again, the cash flow forecast would indicate somewhere around the end of the year. Still, June, still. We would, again, we would experience serious disruption in cash flow. <coughs> and then somewhere between 30 and 60 days after that, we would so probably find it impossible to Pretty and much within the same time frame. At this, I know right. it's all fluid. It could right. blow up tomorrow, you know. But again, I mean, unless there was some single expenditure of a significant <laughs> yeah. uh, dollar amount that we had to you know, expend between now and June, I've been using the the run rate, which is the operational run rate, which is starts with payroll and down to all of the items that we need to continue to operate. Thank you. And defer the taxes again. And defer the taxes. I would also add that <coughs> in terms of, that's not just the Hudson River area, the Black River area has a different issue whereby they still have their uh, statutory, we all have the district has a statutory authority to assess, they still have their beneficiary base. However, based on the increased allocation of general board that they've paid now for almost five months and then part of last year, they would have cash flow disruption towards the end of the year where they would need to bridge a 30-day period or more. Uh, or they're not going to be able to get to the next assessment receipts, which generally don't happen until the end of October. I mean, there are some assessments that are received prior to that, but the lion's share, which comes primarily from, quite frankly, one beneficiary pays 67% of the assessments. Without that happening sooner than it normally happens, they'll have, they'll be an issue. With You're talking 2012. Correct, 2012. We're still working on that solution. We are, but we are working on trying to move that receipt of assessment back to a July date that mm -hmm. would give them more than ample um, cash right. and funds to bridge to the October 31st date. And then once they're there, then they're good right again right through the year again. And then so the thing that solves the problem for both is the receipt of our past due assessments, at which point they would be reimbursed all of their reserves and the over allocation of the general board. Uh, just a question. I don't know if you automatically do it, you know, staff to staff or, you know, if the chairman has directed otherwise. I'm just asking a question. Um, 
you know, senior staff and board members, maybe a select few working on this situation, you know, trying to come up with different strategies and how to bring in, in more income or income before it's actually due mm -hmm. to bridge the gaps. Um, any of that information, is any of that disseminated down to Carol and John? Um, because my concern is that, you know, they're sitting back there worrying about their numbers and how they're going to meet, uh, you know, certain obligations. We might have a strategy that we're working on that, you know, may solve the problem. Are we keeping them in the loop or we've not done that? I'm not criticizing them, but have we not done that? And if we haven't, should we take a look at doing that? Or am I going down the wrong path here? Or? Actually, Mr. Astafan, I think I like we've agree. certainly, while it may not happen always right on that particular day, I think we've, we've briefed all, you know, all senior staff and, and had discussions of uh, just those particular efforts we're, we plan to make to bridge those gaps. And, and, and there's a couple of different, and, and there's a couple of different efforts that we're talking about. One is, one is on the uh, on the, the Black River side, on the Black River accounts, and the other is on the the, the Hudson side, uh, it, where we are have a significant effort underway to cover the shortfall and allow allow both areas to bridge the gap until, uh, in other words, buy us more time to. Mm -hmm. Uh, fully receive our full assessment. We we have had those discussions. Um, sometimes, uh, I mean, for all of it, it's a moving target. Yeah. Um, because what, the, the date that we may have talked about last week seems to, it, you know, it's constantly moving. But yeah, yeah. We, we so I, I I I think that we've had uh, very frank discussions and. Uh, Okay. It's something that our staff, that we've got to do more of, that we've got to do on a, on a weekly basis. Um, the reason I bring it up, I'm, again, I'm not criticizing anyone, that's not, that's not entering my mind, is sometimes, like with myself, I'll get so entrenched with a problem, you know, trying to solve it, um, you, you lose track of time, and then you've got people that are under you who are worried about what's going to happen, and uh, then you say, geez, I, you know, I should have had a, a meeting or I should have informed so-and-so so they can, you know, not worry about this or that they know that I'm trying to do something or we're trying to solve the problem, uh, not sitting back questioning, you know, what's going to happen in six months or three months. So that's the reason I brought it up. I, but from what you're saying, that's being done, so... I think that uh, we've, I'm not saying it's done perfectly every time, but I do think that uh, uh, we've got a great senior staff and everybody's still here and uh, working very closely on this. And yeah. that, that, uh, you know, we are all, uh, I can promise you, we are all vested oh, I know completely you in the, I know in you the situation. <laughs> and, 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 and the mission of the regulating district uh, hangs in the balance. And we know that. Okay, there were a couple of discussions at the last meeting, and I know you weren't. Yeah, okay, uh, good. Uh, of possible solutions. Well, I just, it's yeah. been on my mind lately. That's, that's the reason I brought it up. Good point. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for reminding us. Um, Well, no, I just Mr. Ferrer? Well, just else? once again, the only uh, formal action of the board is just to acknowledge that I will be issuing this MWBE okay. master goal plan on Friday as written with those goals. Okay. Yeah. We well, may reach, we may not. It's the plan. Eventually, it'll make it to the webcast. And that's a revision to one that we it's had submitted. It's a revision to the one you submitted. submitted with the yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Reducing the goals back to the government's required 20 percent. Good. Anything else? Unless the board has any. Do you have any questions for Mr. Ferrer? No, I am done. I want to thank him for balancing the books as well as he is. Yeah. Doing a great job. Ringing what you <laughs> have about what we have left. Right now.
Better days are coming. Yeah. Uh, Chief Engineer's report. Thank you. Sir. Uh, the report begins on page 50. If I will turn your attention to the last three pages, the graphs is, in this case, the graphs are worth a thousand words. Uh, and we're making headway on pulling all the work, our reservoirs down. Uh, in the case of Stillwater and, or excuse me, Great Sacramento Lake and Indian Lake from our peak elevation back in September. Um, the Great Sacramento were about five and a half feet above our target. And the lake were about a, uh, about a foot and a half over our, our tar target. And that's still water uh, right now above the target but below our historic average uh, in an attempt to to hold an elevation uh, throughout the rest of the year and into the beginning of next year. And we're going towards the Sixth Lake uh, as we usually are and are able to uh, fairly close to target within or less than three quarters of a foot off the target in both those places. We have below average precipitation uh, in the Hudson River area. 16 80 percent historic average, yeah. and in the Black River area, similar conditions 50 to 70 percent historic average, which clearly helped us to bring those reservoirs down, keep, keep on our target. In the Hudson River area, our inflow to Great Stock and Dogger Lake and Indian Lake is 87 and 46 percent respectively a historic average. And in the Black River area, we had inflow to the Stillwater Reservoir about 50% of historic average. And our discharge actually at Stillwater is about equal to a historic average discharge for the month. Are there any questions? We'd like to answer those. Otherwise, we'll play the floor. We're, uh, we're, the releases of second dogger, how much? Uh, about 4,000 4, CFS. We've been running 4,000 uh, successfully, again, because of the lower uh, precips and flows, natural flows. So we've been able to uh, make some good headway in you know, those higher September elevations that we saw on the graph. And, uh, we'll continue to do that till probably for another month or so before we're. <coughs> pretty close to the target elevation. With precipitation being down, not getting any appreciable snow. Yeah, yeah. Um, so does that change your forecasting? Do you do that now? Or well, it, it may have, may affect the forecast. We are at, in the case of Sakandaga, we're locked in. Uh, the target is the target, uh, and even if it is dry, it is also. Um, the amount of precip that we receive in the springtime, just from spring rain, uh, is adequate to refill the reservoir uh, with uh, appropriate conservative uh, storage. And so uh, it, it has never historically been a problem at all, even on the low uh, uh, snow total winters. At the other reservoirs, we certainly will take a look at that. I guess still water is fairly productive in terms of spring runoff. Uh, it doesn't take an awful lot stored up in the sponge that is the watershed of still water you know, to, uh, to fill it up. And, uh, um, but we would, I would certainly take a look at it come January. Okay. And uh, if, it, if there's a need to significantly back off or, or, or even uh, begin to store a little bit of water, and it seemed it was extremely dry, and then I would do that at the time. Okay, so, good. Smaller reservoirs. They're not at all a problem. It's certainly, Fulton Chain. Uh, again, their water sets are very productive in the springtime. We all just <coughs> put our hoses in the lake. Probably twice as much water as we need in the springtime. Okay. Just good. put our hoses in the lake and fill it up. <laughs> I saw the national weather forecast was uh, 
a warm weather pattern for the next few weeks anyway for this area from down south. Good. But they're also forecasting a late winter. So. Good count. Yep. All right. Any questions for Mr. Fulton? Thank you. All right, uh, Hudson River Area Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Professor. My report starts on page 92, and we've been busy at the office with the access permit renewals, printed out over 4,700 of them, and then they all get uh, put in the envelopes and mailed out. We're probably three quarters of the way through with those. Uh, I've received some help from the Albany office. So Sue's been extremely busy doing that. And uh, a few people from the Albany office has come up and helped us, help us. And I'm hoping to have them mailed out by Friday. We'll mail them all together. And uh, she'll start receiving them within a week or so. And receiving the uh, renewals back. Get that for me. And I met with uh, Permittee and his attorney uh, in regards to an encroachment that I talked to you about. In the the Utica meeting, and uh, they are all set to remediate the way uh, what we would allow. So that work will probably take place in the spring because it's too late now this time of year to do the work that it needs to do. But uh, it's, it's, that was the uh, access road, or yeah, yeah. So okay. remind me, John, wasn't one of the remediation is rather difficult and that the building was sitting in the that was the another permit that was where we, we did okay. revoke their permit all right okay I yeah there was there. two of them there and uh, the other ones did respond to us and met with them and we're all set to uh, they're all set to do the work that we requested we're going to do it uh, early next year and i assume there's no response from the other one Nothing. Okay. So they will not get a renewal. That's all I have. Anybody has any questions? That was my own. All right. Uh, Black River area. Thank you, Mr. Bergstresser. And my report is on pages 98 and 99. Um, much of what I've been going to report on, you've all discussed in this meeting. However, I can take it to a little farther for you. We have completed the installation of the STEM in Gate 3, and great kudos to my staff. I, mean, I have a staff of three people in the field working. All come to the table with great diversity of skill and experience and they work together well. And to do what they've done, to take under, undertake those kind of responsibilities above and beyond the operations and maintenance that they're doing every day, it, it's, a, it's a large task. But um, over the time, they've, they've done it. They've done a nice job, as was recognized already. Um, we have moved on to gate four, and we've dewatered gate four. We will inspect that stem and uh, all of the brackets to make sure that they're, they're all in place where they should be. So um, we have prepared ourselves for snow surveys. They will start early January, so the staff and myself have gone out in the field and uh, visited all the sites, prepared them, and we have 12 sites that we go through over a two and a half day period. So and, uh, in our Watertown office, the we have uh, sent all of our uncollected assessments out to the county treasurers and uh, expect that we will be getting some of that back in January. And the uh, administrative assistants in the Watertown office are undertaking some cross-training with each other because, again, we only have two people and one responsible for the website, the other responsible for our software in our county. And uh, so they, including myself, are going through weekly training to try to be able to cover each other in case somebody's out. So we, we have been keeping ourselves busy. Good. Thank you. How's the new move or the 
anticipated. Anticipated. Anticipated move. Yes. Well, it's moving along. I got some more paperwork today that we'll send down, and I think we're hoping in January that we'll okay. get right back. Thanks. Any other questions for you? You are going to look into the gate four and the stem there. Right. Do you anticipate right. anything like gate I don't three? Think or? That there's going to be, and I can refer to our engineer, but we're not sensing that there was, but yeah. obviously since we Does one know. gate get used more than the other? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, moving on to board business. Does anybody have any questions or comments from the board? I have one, unfortunately. Let me get it out. <laughs> I have a letter from Mr. Klein. Um, I'll read it, actually. David, please allow this correspondence to act as notification of my desire to formally resign from the Hudson River Black River Regulating District. Effective on midnight, 12 31, 2011. Okay. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the directors, both past and present, that I've had the pleasure of serving with, and the very competent staff of both districts. Wish you all well in the circumstances that you will be presented with in the future. I am confident that you will all do your absolute best in accomplishing these sometimes formidable tasks respectfully. So, W. Klein. I personally would like to thank him for his service to the board and to the state of New York. and. So the guidance and wisdom I picked up from him. Well, the whispers from next this evening. <laughs> <next week. laughs> As I indicated, it's been a pleasure. Uh, it's a uh, probably a, a, a little known authority, but mm -hmm. it, it really the work that it does is uh, just absolutely fantastic. And uh, I, when I accepted the appointment uh, back five plus years ago. I, I had no idea what Hudson River Black River did, and uh, so it was a it was a very uh, interesting learning curve. Uh, probably still on it, but uh, anyway, the uh, it, the tasks and some of the things that we've gone through in the last five years probably have only made us stronger. We were able to react, we were able to solve the problems. I'm sure that uh, that you'll solve the present problems that are that exist in front of you right now. And um, you've got some uh, excellent staff, you've got good board members, and I'm sure that everything will work out for the best. But uh, thank you, I had a great experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Anyone, anyone else have anything to after that? <laughs> yeah. All right, so what I need is a Resolution for the next board meeting, which is I'm not sure. Let me get to the back of my packet. To be held at the Mayfield Municipal Complex, North School Street in Mayfield, on January 10th, 2012. I have a motion to accept. I'll make that motion. All right, second. Second. Okay. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion for adjournment. I move. Mr. Stover. Second for adjournment. Mr. Pine. Appropriate. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Six. So moved.